Thanks for dropping in. This is the Twist Lock Trick Box, a small container with a secret locking mechanism. It looks like any normal box with a slide-on lid, but pulling the lid won't work, and unscrewing it is a no-go. These rectangles don't move either. The key to opening this box is the decorative design on top. If you give this a small twist, the container starts to react. Some of the rectangles on the side of the box begin to slide out in unison, and now the lid can come off. So how does it work? Well, the lid latches onto the base with these latches. The mechanism that controls these latches is quite simple. Each latch is connected to a central gear in a rack and pinion configuration. Since all the latches are driven by the same central gear, their movement is perfectly synchronized. This 3D printed spring connects to the gear and pulls everything into the locked position. The gear passes through a hole in the lid where it can snap on to the decorative topper piece. Turning the topper piece rotates the gear, which moves the latches, which unhooks the base. Simple. Fitting all the mechanics into the lid frees up the rest of the design to be highly customizable. The base for the box can be switched out to get different container sizes. The design is releasing with five sizes, all the way from extra small to the soda can sized extra large. But really, this could be remixed into all sorts of container sizes and shapes. All that's necessary is that the top of the base meshes with this hexagonal lid. The next customizable piece is the topper, the part that you twist to unlock the lid. The project includes three topper designs, basic, honeycomb, and art deco. The topper design can either obscure the method used to open the box or make it more obvious. For example, the art deco design includes ridges around the edge that are pretty clearly for gripping. In this case, I wouldn't consider this a trick box just a box with an unusual lid. The basic and honeycomb designs, on the other hand, look like they're there just for decoration. Since they fit the shape of the lid so closely, they probably won't be the first or second thing someone would test when trying to open the box. Fortunately, you're not just limited to these designs. If you have access to modeling software, you can turn almost any existing 3D design with a flat bottom into a topper. Here's a Lord of the Rings inspired statue posted on Thingiverse by Crafting Toei. All I needed to do was cut a 4mm deep hole into the base of the design. To fit onto the gear, the hole should be the size and shape of a hexagon inscribed within a 20mm circle. Now that I have a topper and a complete set of parts, let's assemble a box. First attach the gear to the spring. This is going to be a very tight connection. You probably won't need glue, but it will require some force. Make sure the gear is flush against the spring. Next, we're going to insert these three fake latches. Once again, this is a very tight connection and probably won't require any glue. The fake latches slide into the sides of the lid that have this little overhang and snap right in. We'll repeat that with the next two latches. Now we're going to insert these real latches. They're not going to snap in, but we just need them in position. Now we're going to insert the spring. For this step, I do recommend using a little bit of glue. It's not absolutely necessary, but the glue will keep the spring strongly held within the lid and will make the whole mechanism feel a little bit tighter. For the next step, I'm going to be using 3D glue, an adhesive made specially for 3D printing projects. You could also use super glue or even hot glue, but I find that this holds very strongly with very little contact. The gloves and placemat are probably overkill, but every once in a while this gets extremely messy and I'd rather mess up this mat than the table. First make sure that all three latches are in the open position. This will help you drop in the spring with minimal fuss. We really want to make sure that we don't glue these latches into place. So I'm just going to be putting a small drop of glue next to the fake latches on each side. Next we're going to pre-tension this spring. We want it always to be pulling the latches in, even when they're in this default locked position. To do that, we just make sure that the latches are all held into place so they're not going to slide around on us. Lift the spring up and rotate it exactly one notch, then slide it back into place. 
When you're rotating the gear, you may notice that the arms of the spring kind of get in the way of the teeth rotating. But if you just kind of push the pieces around a little bit, you'll eventually be able to navigate around the spring arms and get it back into place like this. At this point, you might be tempted to test fit the lid onto the base. I strongly recommend that you do not do this. There's a chance that you'll get the lid onto the base and accidentally poke this gear through the hole a little bit, temporarily breaking the mechanism and making it impossible to remove the lid from the base, at least not without a lot of fiddly work with a screwdriver. I made that mistake myself, and I don't want anyone else to have to suffer through that. So next, we're going to attach the topper. That way the gear can't possibly move out of position. The topper should fit onto this hexagonal peg pretty easily. In fact, that's a little bit too easy. We really want this topper to stay put. So this is another step where I recommend using glue. Push the gear down into the topper to make sure that you have a very tight connection. And then give this a minute to cure. And that's all the glue we're going to use for this project. All that's left is to attach the base. So we'll take the base, twist the topper, fit it onto the base, and let the topper go. With a topper like this, in an extremely small base, this really does become more of a secret box than a trick box. A nice trick with this project is that once you've completed one lid, you can easily remove one base and attach it to a different one. Lastly, I have something seemingly off topic. A few weeks ago, I mentioned that I'm revising this old brick block puzzle box that I never released. The original design had a lot of problems, so I'm taking my time to design it right. In the meantime, I plan to release relevant parts of that design as I go. These trick boxes look nothing like a Super Mario brick block, but the mechanism we just assembled is actually one small part of that revamped puzzle. I won't spoil exactly how this fits into the puzzle solution, but I was too pleased with the mechanism not to create a smaller project focused entirely on it. So what do you think? Do you plan on designing your own custom topper? If so, let me know. Until next week, happy printing and thanks for stopping by. Thanks for dropping in.